Love Talk Radio. Oh. One second. Welcome to the Women Who Rock with Success Show. A digital media for professional and entrepreneurial women. Women are profiled on our digital platforms for branding and networking opportunities. To advertise on one of our shows, just go to our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com and submit a request on our advertising page. Did you know that we also report stories with top-notch media communications? Editors and reporters can submit credible and validated stories to our media source. Just go to www.topnotchmedia.org. Women Who Rock With Success continues to brand women and their profiles. Women Who Rock With Success is coming soon to Apple TV. You can also find us on Google Play, Roku TV, iHeartRadio, and other digital media sources. The show will begin in a moment with your host, Mrs. Diane Winbush. And good morning, women, and welcome to the Women Who Rock With Success show. And this is your host, Miss Diane Winbush. And so we're going to go ahead and get started with the broadcast. Last week we had interior designer and decorator uh, Betsy uh, Helmuth uh, from Affordable um, Interior Designs. And so today we have another uh, designer that is with us, and she has appeared on HGTV um, as well as the Property Brothers. And so let's welcome to the panel today, Miss Lisa Canning. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. We're so thankful that you joined us on the broadcast on today. So let's get into the show. So tell us a little bit about you. How did you get into um, interior designing? Well, you know, for the last 10 years, I have uh, practiced interior design up here in Toronto, Canada, where I am from, and I kind of got into interior design by accident. I was student council president at my high school and always speaking Mm -hmm. in front of the student body and and parents, and a mom who was a casting director was always like, Lisa, you need to be on TV, and I was like, (laughs) I don't even know that that could be a job. I really was like, that's a job? I thought you have to be an actor or like a newscaster. I really had no idea Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, Lifestyle TV was a place where I could start a career, and so she introduced Mm -hmm. me to a production company in Toronto. I auditioned for a show, and the rest, as they say, is history. I was uh, the featured designer on a show called Marriage Under Construction, and that Uh show went on to air in, I can't remember, like 53 countries around the world. (laughs) And that was my my launch. I accidentally got started on an HGTV show because of a dear mom who um, saw me and recognized a strength that I had in presenting and speaking. So that's where I got my start. Uh Okay. Wow. That's very, very great. Um, Wow. Okay. You just went on to the show. Okay. Good. Great. Because I know the the, the former, uh, the the previous, not former, the previous guest, her, her, um, um, I guess background was similar, identical to yours. It was like uh, I think she was taken under the wing of someone like in an intern. She didn't have, well, this one, uh, Betsy Helmuth, she stated that she did not have any training. She didn't go to no school, no college, no university right. for it. I think right. someone that was on television just took her under their wing, and it just, boom, just escalated like that so that is so awesome and so that can well, also what I, what help to is, go ahead uh-huh. yeah what, what I think is interesting about this is that to just be always open to possibility and opportunity I think that you know maybe a previous version of myself would have been like no way that's just like so strange or so um you know unheard of or I'm really uncomfortable with this but I kept myself mm-hmm. open I was very young when I started um I kept myself open to the opportunity and mm-hmm. I, that's sort of been a theme in my life <laughs> being open to what's okay. possible and so uh, you know I think that's the lesson in these these experiences where you know if someone's listening and they're like well I never had an opportunity like that or I never had a mom who recognized something like that is to just be open to anything, even if it might okay. sound absurd or unknown or very uncomfortable. I think the real lesson in this is um, that being open can lead to something great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely, because I know that the women are going to love this. Wow, and, and and it was just phenomenal how she brought in, 
you know, and I know you're Lisa County today, but I'm just, your, your, your stories are kind of compatible, you know, it's just kind of, okay, here I go, I'm going straight to the television, no training or what have you, and so that's, that's, that helps other women to, like you say, you have to be open, and then it helps other women to be able to have an open mind as well, you know, some people, they fall into cracks, you know, I have to do all of this, and it's going to take me 10 years to do this, and things like that, and so now this lady, she has a beautiful storefront, so that is so exciting. Oh, I love it. So um, tell us about know, your brand. Like, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go yeah, ahead. Uh-uh, go ahead. I, I just want to share, too, that it wasn't with a lot of hard work. It wasn't without a lot of hard work. So, you know, to continue the story, essentially, I started the show on HGTV, and then people started mm-hmm. calling and uh, were interested in my interior design services. But one unique mm-hmm. thing about my story that happened was at the same time as growing my 10-year interior design business, I had a lot of children. So in 10 years, I've had seven <laughs> children. <laughs> oh. Basically every other year of my adult life, I have been you know, pregnant and uh, birthed a beautiful baby into the world. I'm pregnant with That's our eighth right. baby, which is <gasps> wild. <laughs> okay. So we wow. have eight children ages 10 and under. And what happened with me as, as quickly as my um, lifestyle television and interior design business was growing, I was growing Mm -hmm. my family at a very rapid pace and having to learn all kinds of new skills in both. And that is where my my brand, my new sort of evolution of my business has now come to be. So people really stopped asking me questions about what color should I paint my kitchen or, you know, what's the hottest trend in bathroom design. People would stop Mm -hmm. me, like literally in the street sometimes, if they ran into me and asked me, how do you get out the door in the morning with this many children? Or they'd say, you know, heartbreaking (laughs) things like, I'm having such a hard time with one, but how do you manage seven? Mm -hmm. And so the brand has kind of evolved now into helping people design their lives rather than design their homes. So I've launched a Mm -hmm. brand new book, The Possibility Mom, How to Be a Great Mom and Pursue Your Dreams at the Same Time, where now my career looks like helping moms figure out how to follow their dreams, but not at the expense of their family. Because that's where I think Mm -hmm. there is a lot of challenge and misunderstanding today. You know, there are many messages Mm -hmm. thrown at the modern mom. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to Mm -hmm. lean in. You've got to, like, commit. You've got to break all the glass ceilings. We need women in all aspects of work. And I believe in all those things Mm -hmm. 100%. However, Mm -hmm. I think the conversation that we sort of miss or the opportunity that is missed that is essential is how on earth do you actually do that? (laughs) If you're going to be working, you know, 40 hours plus a week, and you've got one, two, three, or more small kids at home, how Mm -hmm. do you actually get dinner on the table when you have, you know, you're just leaving the office at 6 p.m.? How do you ensure that your your partner, your husband, are cared for and feel nurtured when you also have 100 other competing demands? How do you make sure your children actually remember you as a present and loving mom when you constantly feel divided? These are the things that I think are so important to talk about in the Mm -hmm. landscape of modern motherhood today that I, you know, hope and pray that my book, The Possibility Mom, does and helps women to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Perfect. And so we're going to dive into that um, a little bit further in the um, the broadcast. And that is so interesting. You know what I thought about? And it's it's kind of comical. And then, you know, because you don't want to have the seven children. But I thought about Kate with eight or Kate eight or something like that, the the, uh, reality show. That used to come on on to TLC, but you know some mothers can um, be able to uh, navigate between their job, their career, and uh, their passion. What it is that they. Um you know, are trying to pursue. So that's interesting. So it started out as an interior designing, but the more you begin to develop as a uh, parental uh, uh, parent with your children, it's more geared towards trying to help moms to be able to juggle between that and then wanting to be able to accomplish uh, some goals that they would like to accomplish for their career. You got it. And it's such a... Joy that this is what I get to do every day. I really just feel so passionate about helping moms to thrive because I do not think that motherhood is meant to be a place where dreams go to die. I really do mm-hmm. believe that mm-hmm. in motherhood, a mom can have it all. I really do. But the key distinction mm-hmm. I make in that statement is that she cannot do it all herself. I believe a mom can have it all. 
but she cannot do it all herself. And that is a huge distinction and a thing that I think is very challenging for moms today. One thing that mm-hmm. I really see very consistently on my Instagram at Lisa Canning in my DMs is moms struggling or feeling guilty to ask for help. This is the most commonly mm. talked about theme, I would say, like on my social platform. Um, because for so many different reasons, they feel like, well, I had children. It was my choice to have children, so I should be able to mm-hmm. do this on my own. Or mm-hmm. um, I feel so bad asking people, people for help because I feel like I'm inconveniencing them or what have you. Or really like this, this, this almost like drumbeat of I should be able to do this. And mm-hmm. my friends, <laughs> if anyone else is listening out there and feels like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly me, this is not mm-hmm. true. We used to parent in communities. We used to Mm -hmm. parent where everyone did things together in a local village where Mm -hmm. moms helped each other out in in Mm -hmm. buildings and and with, with, you know, like just in community. Mm -hmm. You would watch each other's children. You would cook each other Mm -hmm. meals. You would do each other's Mm -hmm. laundry or you would do things together. It didn't feel (laughs) like such an isolating experience. But today, somehow, we've become these sort of standalone autonomous, like Mm -hmm, do it all mm -hmm. myself and plaster a smile on my face and say that everything is okay when it really isn't. And so that's Mm -hmm. what I really hope the book does for women is to empower them to be able to ask for help and then give them the strategies to not only ask for help, but ask for help in the strategic areas. Like what, where can they get help? even if you may not feel like you have the available funds or um, the available resources, how can you ask for help? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. I must uh, uh, have to agree with you in regards to it. It seems like um, today, you know, I guess with the millennial, uh, it's like uh, parents have divided. Uh, they feel like they don't have anything to uh, reach out to and what have you. Um, a couple of weeks ago we had um, – a very uh, popular guest on the show, Jaja, I think I'm pronouncing her name right. And so, um, and we were discussing, or she was providing information as to why, you know, some mothers, they fall into that postpartum, you know, after having uh, children mm-hmm. and what have you. And so we had a, we have a very uh, sad crisis here where this upscale mother comes up into, you know, um, is in this very escalated high community with her husband, but the husband is outside cooking and she develops the, you know, she has had the postpartum and all of that. And so she did away with all of her children. It is really sad. And so, you know, we have to, we, yeah, we have to be able to be, you know, reach out to someone else. And and sometimes people can have a lot of children. They don't know who to talk to. You know, all of them may be school and, you know, you may tell one, this one to go and do chores and this one is all over the place. And like I said, the the husband was outside. He was fixing things for the guests to come over and things like that. And then she was in there, you know, um, doing some some things to them. And so, of course, they're all deceased. And so one of them was able to survive. And so, and I really don't blame the mother. I just, somehow, I just don't. It's like sometimes individuals have mental issues. And so this is a good fit for the program on today to be able to allow women. You have seven and fin to get ready to to have eight, you're able to to navigate and maneuver between all of these things. So we don't have to go in and pick those type of choices. We have to be able to reach out, connect with someone, go to a group, go to a Sonic, buy some ice cream, go and refresh yourself. <laughs> You know something, so Absolutely. it can be able to keep the, you know, keep the the process down where we feel we have to do it alone. So, um, in regards to that, so, um. What has compelled, what was the, what compelled you? I know you, we talked about, you know, how you got started, but what was your actually passion for um, interior designing? We're still on that segment before we be able to go into the book. Um, you know, I, I always liked making things pretty. I always liked um, art and, and color and design. But really, mm-hmm. I think my motivation for interior design was helping families to thrive at home. I, I, I really, that was what I was able to identify later on, was that mm-hmm. I just wanted to help families. I wanted to help people. I wanted to help people live more beautiful lives. So I would say in the beginning, my real, um, my real thrust into getting into interior design was helping people make uh, good, beautiful decisions for their home. Our homes influence our lives so much, right? Like when Mm -hmm. you think about 
beyond beauty, be, beauty absolutely influences our moods and our mental health and all these things. But how a space is organized, how efficient, you know, you can do an activity because you have, you know, access to things at your fingertips, all those kinds of things, it's very important. Uh, and so mm-hmm. I think really um, my the main impetus for getting into interior design was, was helping people. Okay, okay. Wow, that is so great. So um, let's talk about a little bit uh, about HGTV. And so um, what was your, uh, what was the takeaways that you, well, not the takeaways, but what was it that you actually, the fun part that you got out of that appearing on that show as well as Property Brothers? Um, You know, it was an interesting experience in doing something for the very first time. I I really had never done any kind of, like, acting or presentation (laughs) except for Mm -hmm. speaking in front of my high school. So I didn't have any formal training in design or in broadcasting. It was really Mm -hmm. all just, here you go, Lisa, here's a new experience, (laughs) learn as you go. And that's mm-hmm. been a very valuable skill that I've I've um, taken with me as I've become an online entrepreneur and now moved into coaching moms. I, I think we can be almost paralyzed by fear of the unknown or paralyzed okay. by the fear of getting something wrong. And honestly, okay. I think the best lesson of all these things, um, you know, working with the Property Brothers, working on um, on the show I did on HGTV has mm-hmm. been just not being afraid to get it wrong because, oh, my word, I have failed many, many times. But you don't learn if you don't try. So I think that really was my mm-hmm. best lesson, um, that, you know, you either get the lesson that you want from an experience mm-hmm. or the outcome that you want, right? So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really like you win either way. So even when you do fail, you're still winning in my opinion. <laughs> okay, 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 great, go great. So we're going to step into another segment, and this is going to be talking about um, you managing your home <laughs> and your, uh, you know, uh, broadcast media as well as, you know, when you uh, be able to appear on television as well as um, just with the interior designing. So Tell us, how do you manage all of that? You know, and, and another thing just came to mind, too. I'm like, wow, octopus. You know, you got a lot of arms <laughs> to be able to, you know, to, to go everywhere. I got to cook. I got to get on TV. I got to get the makeup. I got to get in the studio. I got to get the lights and uh-huh. stuff. And then I got to go in here uh-huh. and wipe the children. Yeah. And I got to do this. So yeah. tell us how you manage all of that. <laughs> Well, I love that visual. I'm going to I'm going to borrow that. I'm going to borrow that. Okay. Um okay. Really what I learned over so many years of epically mm-hmm. failing. So I really want people to hear this. All okay. of this came out. The book, what I do now, speaking, coaching moms one-on-one, my online courses, everything mm-hmm. came out of a very long period of my life where I epically okay. failed at work life balance. And I just want to share a really quick story. I remember right, my um, it was the the height of my I would say the height of my interior design career where I was extremely successful financially as well as um, the things that I was producing I was so happy with. But my family life was falling apart. And I remember mm-hmm. I brought my, um, we had maybe five small kids at the time, four, four small kids at the time, um, up to a cottage um, for the new year, like the Christmas New Year break. And I just remember telling my husband, like, everything's going to change. We're going to be, like, fine. And part of that experience at the cottage was doing a course called five days to your best year ever by Michael Hyatt. And it had an activity Mm -hmm. in it. It was an online digital course um, meant to help you prepare for the coming year and and prepare for, you know, a great year ahead. And one of the questions he asked in it, I thought was so interesting. It was describe your previous year, like a movie, like a movie genre. Mm -hmm. So like action, suspense, romance, whatever, and then give it a title. And I remember it was a year of such great career highs. So I was like, my genre is adventure and my title is goals met. And then Mm. when I asked my husband, okay, what about you? My husband said literally these words, my genre is horror and my title is vice grip. 
And he literally <laughs> said to me, Lisa, I know, it, I can laugh about it now, but at the time, my goodness, was I ever, okay. you know, I couldn't believe how different our perspectives on the previous year right. had been. And he shared with me exactly. very vulnerably. He was just like, Lisa, the pace of your life is unsustainable and it has to change. And I remember that okay. was such a moment for me of humility and to say oh, wow. it doesn't matter how successful my career is. But if my family life is falling apart, none of that is worth it. And so wow. that yeah. is where all of this, the Possibility Mom book and the online course coaching and courses, like that is where um, that all was birthed from, failing at work-life balance and having to develop strategies. So really the, the key thing I can share with you, I do not have octopus arms. <laughs> Sometimes okay. I okay, wish okay. I did. Okay. Um, but okay. the key thing is I am extremely strategic about – where am I necessary to show up? So what are, where are the places that essentially only I can show up and what could be delegated to anybody else? So let me give you an example. Okay. Only I can date my spouse. Only I can nurture my children. You know, only I can cuddle my baby and only I can do certain elements of um, my work, like presenting content, okay. like being on interviews like this. Those mm -hmm. are the things that only I can do. There are mm -hmm. so many things that anyone else could do. For example, cleaning, cooking, mm -hmm. car maintenance, mm -hmm. um, many aspects of my business that require special skills like accounting or bookkeeping, or, um, you know, just clerical organization and administration, um, mm -hmm. certain aspects of um, home repair and maintenance that I really can just put on autopilot. I am mm -hmm. really strategic about where do I need to show up and where do I not really need to show up and are completely adequate for someone else to do. And that has been the key success. Like the key to my success and the key success to many women I coach is having this shift in thinking of, as I was sharing earlier, I don't need to do everything myself. It does not mm. make me a more successful mother or business person or anything by doing it all myself. What makes mm -hmm. my life successful is showing up in the correct places, in the most strategic places, and in the places where are really going to add to the legacy I want to leave on this world. You know, this is a really important piece to think about too. If you want to be remembered as a caring and loving wife, you need to care mm -hmm. and love your husband today. If you want to be remembered as a mother who was present and who was a good listener, you need mm -hmm. to act in a way today that is present <laughs> and actually okay. listening to your children. And if you okay. want to do great things with your career or your hobbies or whatever you choose to spend your time in when you're not, you know, mm -hmm. mothering and, and taking care of your home, You've mm -hmm. got to do those, those activities on a consistent basis. These things do not just happen by accident, right? Mm -hmm. We don't just accidentally mm -hmm. be um, great wives. We do not accidentally write books. They happen with intention and with focus and with um, actual activities that will back up that statement. And so I really think that the key in all of this is strategic time management. And it's not about doing things faster or more efficiently. It, 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 although that is an aspect, but it really starts with where am I most essential and where am I not? And where can I use either my community or my resources to either hire out or delegate or even delete the things where I am not necessarily um, needed? Wow. Okay. So it's prioritizing, making sure that the primary things mm -hmm. are important for wow, wow. No, that does make sense. That does make sense um, in order for um, for things to be able to uh, be structured. That does make sense. Wow. Okay. Okay. So no more octopus arms. She got this. <laughs> Y'all, she got this. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. But okay, if I can, if I can continue that analogy, okay, because I, I actually think it's a good one. Okay. I, in a, you know, in a way, we'd all love to have octopus arms, but that's not a yeah. reality. So you need to okay. think like you only have two. 
where can you find six other arms? I think this is actually a really interesting analogy. I only have okay. two. So where are my two arms most useful? Where can I, again, either hire or find in my community or ask a friend for their arm? Let me give you some practical examples. Um, okay. My house. My dad, who is this lovely, you know, early 70s-something retired <laughs> lovely man, love okay. to tinker around my house with like, you know, oh, I noticed your doorknob was broken. I, I fixed it. Or, oh, I noticed that your, you know, your, your faucet was a little bit leaky. I fixed it. Like he just, that gives him life and energy. He loves bringing, he's like my milkman. I always joke about this. He loves to bring milk when he sees that I'm missing it. And so instead of like just sort of allowing it to keep, to keep happening unintentionally, I literally mm-hmm. asked him, dad, can one of the things you do, because you seem to really like to do this, Invol- like voluntarily, you seem to really like to volunteer and do this. I've never even asked you. Can I actually mm-hmm. ask you to make checking the light bulbs in my house a regular occurrence? This sounds like a funny thing, but light bulbs mm-hmm. in my home would stay out, <laughs> burned out for weeks. And my kids would always wow. be like, I can't see anything in here. But I would just <laughs> not make it a high priority to replace the light bulbs. And everyone was bugging me about it. So I was like, you know what? I got to make this a process. And I just said, Dad, every two weeks, can you walk around my house? And if a light bulb is out, like, go buy them all. Leave me 16 in my cupboard. I will give you the money. Can you be the person who changes them? And he was like, I can do that. Let me give you another example. Okay. Grocery shopping. Up here in Canada where I live, and I'm sure it is the same in the United States and anywhere else people are listening, there are resources available where you can place your grocery shopping online, your grocery order online, and then either you can have it delivered or you can drive up with your children in the car and have it all placed in your car already packed in bags for you. This is Mm -hmm. such a simple solution. It saves you so much time as opposed to taking all the kids out of the car, bringing them all through the store, arguing with them about, no, you can't eat that. No, don't open that. No, we're not having Mm -hmm. that. I forget things all the time. And then eventually I would be like leaving the grocery store and be like, the thing, the one thing I came here for, I actually forgot because I'm so frazzled (laughs) after having to break up so many fights and telling people to not, you know, open the M&M package like in the aisle. (laughs) Um, just simple strategies like that. Can you either have your grocery shopping delivered or can you place it online and then pull up your car with your kids still strapped in and then drive home and unpack it? And then one other strategy that I think is so interesting um, Mm -hmm. that could be so fun in a community is, and this is a new one that I've never tried, but I I think I'd like to try it myself personally, is if there is a mom in your community who is a great cook, and you know is already making dinner and has that really figured out, right? And let's say she lives up the street from you or very close, whatever. Or you go to the same Mm -hmm. school where you see each other every day. Could you literally ask them, hey, if I gave you whatever money it is, $20 or something, to just extend the amount of food you're going to cook for your family, could you double the recipe and cook it for mine? And then bring it, either I'll come to your house and pick it up, or when we do school drop-off or pick up, can you just bring it to me and here's some money? You know what I mean? Like if there okay. is somebody already doing something, you can even repeat that for things like returning library books, um, getting dry cleaning dropped off, um, any other repeatable tasks where you are already, you know, doing something and to bring a few extra pieces of clothes for, um, the dry, uh, for dry cleaning or bringing a few extra books from the library wouldn't really be that inconvenient for you and would actually really help a mom out. Like, that is kind of interesting and may not cost that much money, right? And so this is what I'm talking about. You've got to find the other arms. You've you've only got two. If you need eight to make your life work, where can you find those other six arms? Wow. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) That is interesting. Wait a minute. So you have made it like a routine for your dad to come over and um, check out different electrical uh, I don't know the lights and all. Light bulbs. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah, yes. well, it's it's delegating. You have to, well, if you can delegate and and be able to do that, wow, that is interesting because you know we never think that way. We never think that way. The first thing we think, oh, he, they're not gonna come over here and do so and so and so. But a parent would love to be able to um, help out and assist, especially if their child has, um, you know, a workload, um, you know, tasks with them. Well. 
that makes a lot of sense. Wow. I'm going to have to think about that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to think about that. And you too, ladies, are going to have to think about that. Wow. So, um... So let's go to the let's 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 go to the next question. Um, is this is this um, therapeutic uh, for you? Because it's more seem like it's more now of the mom of the possibly possibly mom than more like an interior designer. I know that you still you know may you know go back and forth and nav- navigate between the between both of them because you know a lot of times when a person sees someone with a lot of children sometimes they think the worst but if you have different um individuals to help to delegate with uh the task that you have i mean it should not be that difficult so is that kind of rewarding and therapeutic for you um as a mother mm, yeah one of the one of the greatest gifts of this book has been some of the messages i've gotten from moms and how this book has okay. changed their lives. That, that's been one of just the greatest gifts um, that I am so grateful for. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I, there's been some prevalent themes that have emerged in the feedback. One of them has okay. been, like, you make me feel empowered that I can do this. That, you know, mm-hmm. the story I've told myself is that when motherhood happens, all my dreams need to just be, like, put on a shelf and never mm-hmm. seen again until, you know, maybe okay. my kids are grown. But that's the message I keep hearing that you have helped me to feel empowered um, Mm. and that I can do it and that it might not look like, you know, my friend who has no kids or it might not look like the way you do things, Lisa, but in my own unique way, I can find pockets of time strategically that I can follow my goals and dreams, but not at the expense of my family. So that's been one really rewarding piece of feedback. The other really rewarding piece of feedback is okay. really in just like I don't have to be perfect. Like I don't have to be perfect and nor do I need to do things myself and it's very okay that I fail. That's been another really beautiful piece of feedback and I think that's just so important today and I don't really know how again this happened where we become so obsessed with perfection in a way in in society <laughs> and it might be social media and it might be the kinds of you know, television shows mm-hmm. or the kinds of um, ways that we're sort of presented, like what motherhood should look like. But I, I think we can draw inspiration from all these things. I love looking at places like, you know, Instagram and Pinterest where these beautiful images exist. But I'm also very aware and conscientious that on the other side of that camera is like a hundred bags of, you know, groceries still to be put away, piles mm-hmm, and piles mm-hmm. of laundry that a toddler has just thrown all over the floor. <laughs> um, all that kind of stuff. Like, like it, it, it's, it's it, on one side of the camera, things can look really put together. And on the other side, it can be a mess. And it's why I'm so passionate about sharing many different aspects of my life, particularly on Instagram and on my YouTube channel. Um, mm-hmm. On Instagram at Lisa Canning, I will go live often when things are happening that are not that great. So you know, a child has spilled Cheerios everywhere or a child has, um, you know, completely thrown a basket of laundry that was nicely folded um, all mm-hmm. over the ground. Um, or, you know, I'm having a particular moment of vulnerability or anxiety or overwhelm and I'm crying in my car. Like, I intentionally share both the good and the not so good of my life so that people remember it is okay when you fail because I think too often we stay paralyzed. We are afraid of failing Mm -hmm. and then we don't do Mm -hmm. anything. And then we make zero progress on our personal goals and dreams. And that is just simply, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, not how we were designed to live. We need to Mm -hmm. be okay with failure because Mm -hmm. we are human beings and that it's okay. (laughs) It's okay to fail. Mhm, mhm, and I think it, it's uh, it's um, also rewarding too that um, other parents, such as yourself, are transparent. Um, you know, with um, um, the digital media sources, um, such as what we're doing today, podcasting, as well as um, you know, um, IGTV, um, Instagram, television, and what have you. It's very important because some mothers, um, as we stated before, you know, they go through different type of challenges, mental, stressful, um, and. Physical. Physical, and so they need to hear that. Okay, 
guess what? Look look what Lisa Cannon is go, Canning is going through. And I know if she can overcome this, now I know I can handle it. So I think it's more encouraging to those parents as well because, um, you know, they are facing a lot of things trying to be able to um, deal with the work, marriage, be able to deal with children, and be able to deal with um, other things, whether it's school, because that's what I'm doing right now. And so um, – it can be it can be kind of a little difficult and things, but when we're transparent, I think it helps parents out so much, you know, is to be able to hear someone else's story of success, even though you were crying, but it's still, a, you know, a story of success for others because they can now open up and be able to shed tears um, when they are, you know, faced with a dilemma or challenge. So with, we got just a few minutes left. We want to get the book in real quick, and we want to talk about the possibility, moms, so tell us uh, some of the takeaways that you want the readers to be able to um, grasp from your book. If you would like a life that is not completely burdened by constant overwhelm and mom guilt, I really do believe that my book provides solutions and action steps to get you out mm-hmm. of constant overwhelm. One of my favorite Amazon reviews that I've ever gotten on the book was that The Possibility Mom is like live coaching or a live Mm -hmm. conference in book form. Because in the book, I have downloads and I have worksheets and exercises that help Mm. you process this information. So it's not just a, like, it's not just motivation. I really wrote Mm -hmm. the book specifically to be a guidebook on how to live the best possible life as a mom. Mm -hmm. And so um, it it really is kind of like live coaching with Lisa, um, but in the comfort of your own home. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. That is so, so awesome. This this is very awesome. And so, uh, you know, we're going to have to get you back on to the show because there are some of the the, the questions we have not even been able to touch. And so, um, like I stated, it's very, very important for uh, mothers to be able to get um, the tools and resources from other mothers that are facing challenges and um, and also be able to work. How can I do this? How can I do that? And some individuals, look, some individuals, some mothers and women, they will not even start or begin that um, nonprofit. They won't start and they won't begin that uh, new um, um, development that they just got last night in a dream or an idea that came up because they don't know how to, you know, um, maneuver between the both. They don't know how, I don't know how this is going to happen. Is this going to work out with the babysitter if, you know, I'm pregnant, you know, Mm -hmm. such as yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I got the, I already got two children. I got one on the hip and I got another one on the bottle. And so sometimes there are a lot of challenges that women have to decide, but between do I start now or do I wait or do I wait till they, you know, get out of diapers or do uh, what phase do I start? And so women can really actually start at any time. It's just knowing how to delegate, such as what you, what you're doing with your, you know, your father and other individuals that you have selected to be able to help you out. This is so wonderful. So for the last question, Lisa, um, how can the listeners be able to follow and connect with you? You can also share them where they can be able to share with them where you can be able to uh, find your book, where they can find your book, as well as well as any upcoming uh, courses that you have to offer, any speak engagements that you would um, um, like to uh, bring open for them so they can be able to follow or either register for it. You can do that at this time. You are wonderful. Well, the best place to go is lisacanning.ca, and that has all the information right there on the front page of where you can grab my book. It's available anywhere you like to buy books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Chapter of Indigo, really anywhere that you like to buy books. It's also available on Audible and other um, uh, audiobook platforms. And I would love for your listeners to take my quiz, What's Your Mom? superpower because I really (laughs) think inside of us all we have amazing gifts and skills as as moms and we simply just need to translate them 
correctly. Like we need to channel them in the right way. So if you go to my website, lisacanning.ca, you can take my quiz and also learn about my signature program, Conquer Your Calendar, which is a time management program for moms, as well as um, my YouTube channel and my one-on-one coaching services. All of that can be found at lisacanning.ca. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So, um, ladies um, and gentlemen, you have gentlemen that they listen to the podcast too, and so we're thankful for that. And so, uh, with that, um, everyone, we have had an exceptional day with um, this star. We're going to call her a star because, um, in order for her to be able to uh, maximize her work, her marriage, um, her career, her book, and her family, all at the same time, that is, uh, you know, very exceptional. A lot of people cannot be able to test testify to that and they cannot be able to be able to be transparent to that but you can today because you have heard the t- the keys tools and resources from Lisa to be able to help you to be able to manage all of those things and bring them um, into a blossoming season so for all upcoming events and who's going to be next on the podcast um, you can go to our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com and of course we're going to try to have you back Back on the show so we can be able to finish this up because this is a very um, it's not sensitive but I want to say that it's very important for women because this will help other women to be able to um, start branding what it is that they have and then also move the fear procrastination out of the way so they can okay I do, I, I do have children but that does not stop me from pursuing what it is that I would like to pursue so yes that's going to be a plus and um, of course we probably have to book you probably about I don't know several months in advance but we're going to try to get you back on the show to be able to finish the uh, some things that we would like for the women to know so they can be able to be successful in their career and home so till next time ladies we will see you next Tuesday at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. You can also find us on Roku um, Television, and we'll be up on um, Amazon Fire in about a couple of days, bringing you all the tools and resources for you to be able to brand for success. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being our guest on today. Thank you so much for having me. People who make pancakes don't leave a mess. They leave evidence of pancakes for future generations to be inspired by. Hungry Jack, be your own Jack. 